So a couple of days back, um, I got the uh, call from one of the junior DBA saying that um, uh, they newly built the e-business suite environment. Um, everything uh, finished successfully. Um, they could brought up all the services. However, when they are trying to launch the URL, they are getting this error 403 forbidden in the browser. Okay. Uh, so, so what that, uh, what he has done, immediately he was issuing wget from the middle tier and uh, he was getting again the 403 forbidden error. So here, not, here I'm not going to talk about e-business suite, but only thing is this environment, this e-business environment is hosted in Oracle Cloud infrastructure. If it is a legacy environment, now very much you can call your system administrator and you can get help from them, you can, you know, you can play a secondary role here. Because there could be a problem with firewall, there could be a problem with port or whatever it is, you can play a secondary role. But since this is hosted in e-business suite, you have to play a e-business suite administrator role as well as um, OCA administrator role here. Okay. So first you have to make sure um, you know, all the required ports are open. Okay. So 403 forbidden mostly, um, it could be due to some port blocking issue. So, before I explained, you know, what exactly I have done to fix this issue, let me briefly explain about the architecture. Here, this is a load balancer URL. When, we, when you do NS lookup to this URL, it is resolving to load balancer. Okay. So, it is hitting the load balancer with 443 port. All the connections coming to load balancer, it should communicate through 443. From the load balancer, it is hitting the middle tier. Here the port only 8000. So here HTTPS, here HTTP. So your SSL is getting terminated here. So only thing is I know 443 port should be open. Okay. At the LBAS level. From here to here, it is not required. But from the MT, any request originating from MT to LBAS, it should be able to communicate through 443. So what I did, I logged into the middle tier, curl and V. I was trying to see whether I can tell net to that port 443 in the here it was hanging. So at least 80 percentage now I know that, I am pretty sure that, okay, that it could be problem with the port. Okay. So port means in OCI, definitely sec rules will come into picture, right? OCI, if you have already cleared the OCI administrator exam, you very much known about these terms, sec rules, ingress, egress, etc. Right? So using sec rules, only you will you know, we, you will open the port in OCI. Okay, so you have to, there are different connections, stateless, stateful, and ingress and egress and all those things. Okay, now, so first I thought of checking the sec rules, what, whether 443 is opened using any sec rules. So what I did, when you lo I logged into the console using the tenancy ID and uh, networking load balancer, this is a load balancer, right? This is a load balancer. So my load balancer, just I, you know, for security reason, I made the IPS 0 0.0.0.0. 0 .0. So this is my, my load balancer. And when I when I am selecting this my load balancer, it is a hyperlink. When I am selecting this one, it is giving me some load balancer information: shape, minimum bandwidth, maximum bandwidth, all those stuffs, which I am not interested in this case. But I am here 
I am seeing Network Security Group, NSG for LBAS. Okay. So that means this load balancer is associated with one NSG, Network Security Group. I am sure you might be aware of NSG, what is the difference between sec rules and NSG. So just to recollect, Oracle initially came up with sec rules, but sec rules, at what level we define the sec rules? When you are creating the subnet, by default it come up with some sec rules um, to allow some basic connectivity. But uh, what is the disadvantage of sec rules? The sec rule is associated with subnet. So what, what, what are all the sec rules you are defining at, under the subnet which are applicable, you know, which are applicable to all the resources you are creating under the subnet. Suppose you are creating one sec rule. That sec, now in that subnet, you are creating object storage, you are creating uh, instances, you are creating load balancer. This sec rule is associated with all the resources, cloud resources you created under that, you know, subnet. So they came up with the concept called network security group, NSG, even Oracle is recommending now to use the NSG rather than sec rules. You can create the NSG and you can associate it with any parent resource. Your parent resource can be LBAS. So this sec rule is associated with only LBAS. So I created one sec rule called NSG for LBAS. This sec rules I can associate it with only one LBAS or multiple LBAS. It depends. In the same way, I can create the sec rule for only one middle tier. When you are uh, associating the uh, sec rule for one middle tier, it is associating with the primary VNIC. Okay. So, you can create, though the resources are available under the same subnet, you can create the NSG and you can attach with that particular resource. Here, this LBAS is associated with this load balancer. To confirm that, when I click, when I select this hyperlink, I get these resources. When I click VNIC, yes, the parent resource is my LBAS. So now I'm pretty sure that this NSG is associated with my LBAS. Okay. So that means there are no sec rules. Okay, NSG also going to have sec rules, but no sec rules from the subnet is going to play any role here because this LBAS is associated with one NSG. Okay, now, let me, I have select, now let me check the middle tier because my ultimate goal is to uh, open the port in LBAS for all the connections originating from MT. Okay, so let me check the MT. So compute instances, I got the basic, yeah, my MT is running, I got the basic information, my AD, FD and region everything, primary VNIC, yes here if you see, this middle tier is associated with one NSG called NSG for MT, okay. So here also sec rules are not playing any role, only NSG is associated with this middle tier. So again, when I click the VNIC now, it is showing me this NSG is associated with many middle tiers. This is the advantage. You can create one because all the middle tiers, you, are, you may need to uh, open the same port and, you know, so you can create the NSG and you can attach with all the middle tier. You can create separate LB, you can attach with uh, a separate NSG for LB, you can attach with all the LBs. Okay. So now at this stage, what I understood both my LB and the middle tier 
are associated with NSG, not sec rules. Okay. So before we move further, let me explain this diagram, two diagram. For example, let us say you have middle tier 1 and middle tier 2. Middle tier 1 is associated with NSG 1 and middle tier 2 is associated with NSG 2. Okay. I want the connection from NSG 1 to NSG 2 and any request originating from NSG 1, it should reach NSG 2. Any request originating from NSG 2, it should reach NSG, NSG 2, it should reach NSG 1, vice versa. First, let us consider any request originating from NSG 1, it should reach NSG 2. That means one egress rule should be here from, from one egress to NSG 2. Okay. Then in NSG 2, one ingress rule from NSG 1 should be there. Ingress from NSG 1. In the same way, any request NSG2 should reach NSG1. So, one egress from NSG2 to NSG1, one ingress from NSG2 to NSG1. So, that means the request originating either side can reach either side. Suppose you are giving one condition, the request originating from NSG1 to NSG2, I should allow. The request originating from NSG2 to NSG1, I should not allow. So, NSG1 to NSG2, one egress should be there. And here, one ingress from NSG1, because the source is again NSG1. Okay. So, if you see here, I am, I am, this shoe, this two you should not define. Here, if I define like this, see, egress to NSG2, that means request is originating from NSG1, ingress from NSG1, again request is originating from NSG1. Here I block this one, ingress from NSG2, ingress from, that means request is originating from NSG2, I am blocking. Egress to NSG1, request is originating from NSG2, I am blocking. Okay. So this way you have to define why I am explaining. Because here the request originating from the request originating from middle tier, the request originating from middle tier, I am going to allow to the port 443. If the request is originating from LB to here, no. For 443, I am talking about. That time 8000 should be open, not 443. Okay, 8000 port should be open, not 443. I am talking about only 443. Here the problem is only with the 443. From here to here, yes, request is originating from LB. From here, egress to 8000, it, it should be open. Okay, here on ingress from LB to 8000, it should be open. But he, my case, 443, I should open only here. I don't want to open here. So the request is originating from MT, I should open. Okay, so what? Now, I NSG for LBAS, when I click the hyperlink, it will give me security rules. Add rules, I am in NSG for LBAS. The request originating from middle tier. Okay? and coming to L LBAS, so that means one ingress rule, right? So here, direction ingress, source type, network security group, it's not sec list. Source NSG, NSG for MT, the source NSG, NSG for MT, protocol TCP. Destination, what is the destination? LBAS is the destination, right? Ingress. I am defining LBAS under LBAS. So, what is the destination? It is ingress rule. Destination is LBAS. So, what is what is the destination port? 443. Okay. So, this is this one, this ingress rule, I have defined under NSG for LBAS. Save. Add. Okay. Then, I am going to NSG for MT. 
From the middle tier, I should reach Elbas. Very straightforward. Egress. From the middle tier, egress to NSG for Elbas. NSG for Elbas. Okay. TCP, again the port destination 443. Only these two I have defined. Because 443, the request originating from MT to Elbas I am allowing. So here, ingress at the Elbas side, Elbas NSG, egress from NSG middle tier. Okay, once I define curl hyphen V, it clearly says connected. Okay, now when I ask the DBA to launch the URL, he said URL is launching fine. So here, this will give you some idea about NSG. Okay, this is a very important concept in OCI. If you, if you, you know, if you are uh, planning to work on OCI, if you, if you are managing some environment in OCA, you should know sec rules, NSG and all those stuff. Thank you.